Oop, oop, Graham. Oh, I didn't prepare a noise. <laughs> you caught me flat-footed. Well, that was actually quite the noise. <laughs> I feel like I've opened a, a bathroom door to a monkey pooping. Oh, you caught me. Oh, well, it would be followed by flinging it at you. <laughs> I were true to my monkey nature. Uh, I'm here with uh, Dr. Graham Sanders. <laughs> I know. Last time that was a great introduction. Last time we didn't uh, introduce each yeah, other. And I'm here with Doctor Ray Watt Dean Anden. That's right. And I just caught him flinging poop. No. 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 Oh, fine. We're outside in the Science Monkey Studios in Toronto mm-hmm. on a, uh, a brilliant July day, mm-hmm. and we thought uh, in today's episode we just do a straight out facts and, facts furious, and furious episode because it's so much fun. Yeah. The furious just discover and how ignorant we both are. Of course, the problem with our methodology is we get all our facts off the internet. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we need to have a, a correct, a corrective facts. Everything we said in the last uh, last episode was wrong. We do have a, a, a correcting uh, contingent, and we call that the audience. Mm. They will contact yes. us if we get anything wrong. So I want to stop asking you a simple question. Okay. What was the first internet domain name ever registered? The first internet domain name ever registered. So you're talking about the last three letters after the... No, end. not the extension. Oh, the, actual the actual website. Okay. Because, do, not to be too nerdy, but isn't domain the .com, .org, isn't that no. the domain? And then the, what's before it is the, na- the URL for the website. Anyway. No, the domain is the full name. The full the thing. thing, okay. Hmm. It was probably done at CERN. You would think so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but no. no an earthquake. I have no way of I'll guessing you, that correctly. It was first registered on a... March 15th, 1985. That's very early. You have to give me a hint. Isn't that amazing? So is that... You'll never guess. You'll okay. never guess. Okay. It's actually Symbolics.com. Symbolics.com. Symbolics is actually uh, a small investor group in Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. But that's not the people who first registered it. So if you go to the okay. website now, they have on their about section the history of the name, how they're right. buying it and buying it. Right. But the, originally, I think it was... Um, they manufactured certain machines... Mm. computerized, optimized, uh, Lisp machine. Lisp is a computer program, so they right, make right, yeah. Lisp machines. Mm. It's yeah. not just the way you talk. You know. That too. So, I would assume that the first domain name would have been done where they invented the internet. You'd think so. Yeah. So but, this must be the first commercial look, one they, or something. They didn't even, you know, the people who invented the internet didn't patent they just, it at all. They probably just used numbers too. Right. Yeah. So clearly they weren't money money people. You know, at MIT, they don't have names for their buildings. They're just numbers. Building 32, building 85. I'm surprised they use um, Arabic numeral. Yeah, that's right, this binary code. Yeah. <laughs> I'm headed over to 0111100111111. One, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 one. <laughs> or hex. <laughs> Hexadecimal code. You know, one of my favorite t-shirts is there, there are two types of people in this... Oh, I just blew it. <laughs> well, there, are, there are one zero types of people in this world. Those who know binary and those who don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, name an animal with six legs but cannot walk. Six legs, and it's an animal. Yeah. And it's six legs, and it's not like a sofa or something. No. Because that's not an animal. So, so that's right. Yeah. Is this a semantic no. thing? No, it's not. Language professor, it is not a semantics thing. It's straight out not, science. we're not talking about an insect, are we? When we you say are. animal? A- okay. Insects are animals. No. They are in the kingdom of animalia. Really? Yes. I thought animalia and insecti were separate. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. So there's the fungus among, among us. us. <laughs> there's the animalia. The five kingdoms okay. are, Run so I can name them now. There's animalia, yes. plantae, uh-huh. um, the proteists. Right. Um, Bastards. <laughs> right. Monera. Uh-huh. And fungi. Yeah. Okay. Right. Wow. And you know how you measure, you remember the, um, the rankings? Is there an acronym for that? Yeah, the, of the... the mnemonic, uh, mnemonic device? Okay. That's right. For Go. the various levels of, of taxonomy. Yeah. Uh, kinky people can often find groovy socks. Ah. So kingdom, fi- kingdom, phylum, class, family, genus, mm. species. And a sock sounds like a euphemism they put in there for... Sure. For the G-rated crowd. Oh, they left kinky. That's anyway. <laughs> um, one mnemonic device which I use for the spectrum is Roy G. Biv, right, right. for the visible light spectrum. But then I discovered that there's no such thing as indigo. That's right. That uh, Newton, I told you that. Yeah, Newton just Made it stuck up. it in right. there. You know? So, yeah. Okay. We, wanted we can do. have an entire podcast yeah. on the extent to which individual scientists' personal religious yes. values interject into right. empiricism. To the extent which Newton has been punking us. <laughs> so, the Back animal with question. six legs. So, animal, animal with six legs, which is now an insect because it's also an animal. Um... 
and it can't walk, so it must fly everywhere. I don't know, a bee. Sure. No, I've seen bees walk. Dragonfly. Oh. Dragonflies can't walk. That that makes a lot of sense. I've never seen a dragonfly crawling around anywhere. They land, yeah. and then they take off again. Yeah, that suck. Huh. Well, not if you have wings like a dragonfly. <laughs> Do you have a question for me, or should I keep going? I have a bunch of sex-related questions because, well, because our <laughs> look, Graham, I'm I'm straight. I'm in a relationship. <laughs> I appreciate that the attention. So you know nothing about sex, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, well, actually, that, that was one one I read here, which goes right into that. Apparently. What do gay men? What's bigger on a gay man than your average average gay man than an average straight man? I want to say penis. It's true. Wow. You know, all the straight men tend to be bigger dicks. Oh, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Okay, the one I wanted to ask you, which yeah. is very strange, mm. is uh, what was Alfred Kinsey, the famous sexologist, yeah. able to insert into his urethra? You know, I knew this at one point. <laughs> um, the answer is not a light bulb. No, no, no. The answer is not. We could go on with a whole list yeah. of the answer is not a. The uh, answer is not that hammock. Another penis. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can leave that in. <laughs> I don't know what's the answer. The bristle side of a toothbrush. That's right. That's right. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> this makes me not want to listen to anything Alfred Kinsey had to say. Or the rest of this podcast. Or the rest of the that. podcast. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to your nice questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, who's got the bigger brain? Uh, mm-hmm. Homo sapiens yeah. sapiens or Neanderthals? Oh, I bet you Neanderthals. That is correct. Yeah, because brain size doesn't really necessarily have to do with intelligence. That's, that's right. It's fascinating, yeah. isn't it? By the same token, were Neanderthals possibly smarter than us in other ways? In other ways, and then smashing things with bones. Oh, that's not. They weren't like that. <laughs> they weren't like that. <laughs> having sex doggy style. Everything I saw in Quest for Fire is true. <laughs> Do you remember that film? I do. That was a great film. It was not. Oh, uh, it wasn't? Just my memory of it? <laughs> it was all right. Well, so I confused uh, Quest with, uh, for Fire with uh, Clan of the Cave Bear, oh, okay. which is not a great film. Ray Dong Chong. That's right. All right, I got one for you. Okay. How many popes have died while having sex? Wow. Okay. Officially none. But mm, officially it, none. But actually, yeah. I'm going to go with 12. No, not that many. Four. Four. Yeah, out of 262. So that's pretty close to... A, a, a rounding error. Well, you know how uh, the Marquis de Sade died? No. He died in the ripe old Praying. age. Sometime, I think in his <laughs> 80s or 90s, uh, in, while having, um, uh, how should I put this, uh, well, anal intercourse with his 16-year-old mistress. Mm-hmm. That would be the way he would <laughs> That go. would be the way he would yeah, go, yeah. Really so, uh, back on the sexual track here. What country stopped describing homosexuality as a mental illness in 2001? A, China, mm-hmm. B, North Korea, or C, Belgium? I'm going to have to go with Belgium, actually. China. China, okay. Because I thought Belgium was the counterintuitive choice. That's right. I, I, my psychology I, I failed me. I swerved you there. He's, yeah. That's yeah. Right. And I wonder how much this has to do with them entering the global marketplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, now China's cracking down again. They've um, banned depictions of homosexual relationships in television and movies. Oh. So, let's go for another one. You, you okay, give me sure. one. Right now, we are recording a podcast. The term podcast... That's correct. (laughs) The term podcast was first used to describe, you know, downloadable digital audio content Mm -hmm. in 2004 Mm -hmm. by a journalist writing in which venue? A, Wired? I was going to guess Wired right at the top. B, The Guardian, or C, The Huffington Post? In 2000... 2004. It's it's that recent. Okay. Yeah. I'll just say Wired. That was my first instinct. It's The Guardian, actually. It's The Guardian. Okay. The word podcast always annoys me. It was coined in The Guardian or reported in The Guardian? Does, uh, does it say? Well, like, did I The Guardian guy come up with it? Or a woman yeah. come up with it? What does coin mean? Does that mean coin mean made it up or reported? Yeah, when you coin... Uh, I thought it meant okay. if you coin a term, then you've... You made it up. Made it up. But think, maybe it's putting it into currency and using it huh. repeatedly. I, I think should, when I look this up, they use the word coined, and I think they meant it as made it up. Right. But it doesn't but necessarily. The word mean podcast always annoys me because yeah. I, it strikes me as a, a corporate term that refers to iPods. Right. Play on broadcast. I well, suppose. that's fine yeah, part. Yeah. But people have since told me actually, you know, they've they've retconned the term to mean product on demand. No. Yeah, exactly. I got to get off this list of, of sexual. No, no, don't, don't get off the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, can't do that one. Can't do that one. <laughs> While you're looking, no. I got one for you. Yeah, you. Okay, what rare honor went to the Pyrenean ibex, which is an animal, this past year? A, it was discovered to be 
Before Close. you give me the list of answers, yeah. uh, that reminds me of a joke that my dad used to tell. An Ibex joke? No, an honor joke. Okay. He offered his honor. She honored his offer. And all night long, he was honor and offer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this thing clean. <laughs> Now you know why I'm this way. <laughs> Dad told me that joke when I was eight years old. Yeah, he also I used to say to him, Dad, where was I before I was born? And he would say, My "Well, balls, son. my balls." He said, "Your dad was in Baghdad, and you were in your dad's bag." Oh, and I had no idea what that meant <laughs> until later. I figured it out. And then if he was feeling, you know, uh, not as uh, blue, he would say, "You were in a bottle of Guinness." <laughs> so the audience needs to understand that Graham's dad was a merchant marine sailor. Yeah, that's right. He was a, a British sailor. Everything that entails. The Pyrenean ibex. What oh, rare on Pyrenean, like from the, the Pyre- Pyrenees. I'm assuming okay. this past year. So a it was an ibex is sorry. I keep interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those birds with the the tall no plumes idea. on their heads. It could be that, or it could be an antelope kind of creature. I have no it, idea. No, it's, to a, be it's a bird. No, 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 no. Ibex is an antelope creature. Yeah. What am I thinking? Ibis. I think it's ibis. Sure. You know who will set us straight is Paul uh, Robert Himes. He knows all these. He's things. one of our listeners, Bob and Himes. he always writes in to correct us on things. Correct us. Yeah. So yeah. I could just Google ibex, and it, it's one of those antelope creatures with the curly horns. Sure. Yes. Okay. So now that I know what it is, <laughs> give me the question again. So, what rare honor went to the Pyrenean ibex this past year? Mm-hmm. A it was discovered to be the closest living relative of the Tyrannosaurus rex. Mm-hmm. B, it was successfully crossbred with an ox, producing the ibox. Mm-hmm. That's an honor. Or C, it was the first animal to become unextinct after being cloned by scientists. <sighs> I don't think it was extinct. I didn't think it was extinct. So, and the first one was, it was... Uh, the closest living relative to the Tyrannosaurus rex. That just rex. sounds wrong. So I'm going to have to go with the ibox. No, it actually was cloned. And oh. it, it only survived seven minutes after being cloned. Mm. Was it a South Korean scientist? Could have been. Mm. And the closest living relative to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I think, is the chicken. Okay. Or some yeah, other that would make sense. Yeah. Flightless bird. No, and the eye box you just made up. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's another Apple product. <laughs> 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 you have this rather ungainly antelope with a big Apple logo on its side. <laughs> it looks great, and, but it's overpriced. <laughs> That's and right. breaks easily. <laughs> <laughs> but it never runs down. It never Not crashes. Who was the first to receive a silicone breast implant? You want the name? If you have the name, that'd be great. A description. Of the I would say probably to. some actress in the adult film industry or a transgender operation. Those are very good guesses. Person. The actual answer is a dog ah. named Esmeralda. Esmeralda. Okay, I'm glad we know her name. Yes. Enter. Was it undergoing a sex change operation? <laughs> <laughs> no, I assume this was just to test the feasibility of, of these devices. Well, Esmeralda was going through a midlife crisis. Mm. Was it silicon or silicone. salt water? Okay. Silicone, yeah. Silicone. Right. Okay. Uh, a sample of gas is held <laughs> in a vial. Please don't give me one. I don't need it. <laughs> a sample uh, of gas okay. is held in a vial okay. at the Henry Ford Museum yep. in Detroit. Okay. What is this gas? What's so special about it? A uh, sample of gas. Is it is it the exhaust of the first combustion engine? That's a very good guess. Yeah. It is not. Okay. Henry Ford had an entire city he built in the jungle of somewhere in South America, I think, as as a rubber plantation. So he'd have a secure right. source for his tires. Makes sense. And he planned it and tried to run it. And it's a megalomaniac. Yeah. Don't know. It contained uh, Edison's last breath. Ooh, weird. Yeah. Oh, how? Okay. Yeah. So someone is at Edison's deathbed and yeah. captured his Probably choked bed. him out. <laughs> Breathe. Exhale, bastard. Exhale. <laughs> Caught the death rattle. Do you have a question? No, I gave up on questions. Oh, okay, I got yeah, I'll just be recipient plen- of, your, oh, sure. of your of your. You're like question. every sex partner I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go to sleep. You keep just, going, right? <laughs> Um, what's here's, here's a non-science question for you. Okay. What's Michael J. Fox's middle name? Ah, that's a great one. Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Good guess, but no. Uh, J. J-A-Y. That's a, like a Comer J. Simpson <laughs> and Philip J. Fry. That's right. Nope. Jason. One more guess. That's One incorrect. more guess. Uh, Jezebel. Andrew. You, exactly. You, you got to explain that. Is it he, silent J? The J, d- it just doesn't exist. It's just there to distinguish him from other Michael Foxes on the... Oh, uh, I thought you asked what does the J stand for? No, I asked what's his middle name. Oh, nice one. You got me. me. Oh, I got you good. Yeah. So, baseball legend Babe Ruth mm-hmm. 
used he's to the wear... answer to every trivia pursuit question about baseball is either the New York Yankees or Babe Ruth. Okay. Now we know. Go ahead. So he used to wear under his cap something to keep him cool. Chocolate bar. No. No. Um, I would want to say something like ice, but obviously that wouldn't be very effective. Something to keep him cool. Something to keep him cool. Uh, a wet rag. Uh, no, a cabbage leaf. Okay. Now the ironic thing about cabbage leaves, like Thumbelina. <laughs> She was discovered under a cabbage leaf. This is what my mind does. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Babe Ruth is actually Thumbelina. That's great. Look, a hammock. Okay. <laughs> so in South Korea, wearing a cabbage leaf under your baseball cap is considered huh. unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, really? <laughs> Gives you an unfair advantage? Yeah. <laughs> Cooler heads prevail. <laughs> so everyone's named kimchi. Oh, spicy. <laughs> I have, spicy I have other I have a question. So where are most Bibles produced in the world? Who's so where, who's actually publishing these exactly. Bibles? And, yeah. and also the biggest exporter of Bibles. I want to say China, because usually that's the answer to where is the most whatever. So I'll say China. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. A, a given Big factory market for, produces... Yeah. Well, a funny thing is, um, uh, Chinese uh, Christian missionaries are still smuggling Bibles into China. Right. <laughs> even though China's the biggest producer. Now, are so, these English language Bibles, Chinese they're Bibles? They're multi-language, multi-language Bibles. Okay. Yeah. It's a huge... Yeah, it's a big market. So the Vietnamese banned the keeping of which animals as pets in 2008? 2008, which I, animals? I give you multiple choices. Yeah, like, please do. Okay. A, dogs, mm-hmm. B, cats, mm-hmm. C, crocodiles, or D, hamsters? Um, I'll go with what's the obvious choice, but probably not the correct one, is crocodiles. Uh, hamsters. Hamsters. I don't know why. Why are they opposed to hamsters? I don't know. Because crocodiles keep eating them? You're my Asian scholar, or my scholar of all things Asian. No? Nothing? Nothing. I got nothing there. Probably probably they spread some sort of disease. Or the theory is that they spread, they're a vector for hmm. disease. Somehow. In earlier episode, you know, crocodiles are not descended from dinosaurs. No. I learned that. Neither are alligators. Look at that. In an earlier episode, we learned what the oldest animal ever discovered was. Remember that? Right. The oldest animal ever discovered, and an animal, not plant. That's right. Was a uh, clam, right? A uh, quahog. A quahog, yes. Right. Of, and scientists know. actually killed it when right. they examined yeah, it. It was a few hundred years old. Now, what's the oldest living thing on Earth? And, um, and it's, it's almost five thousand years old. And I want to say something like a coral reef, but no. uh, a yew tree. I'm going to say a me tree. A yew tree. A yew tree. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, a bristlecone pine tree. Ah. In California, eh? are they going to cut that down to probably figure to, it out? To, to confirm yeah, that it is about five thousand years old. There's a metaphor in there. <laughs> a parable, I should say. Uh, are you aware yes. that male fertility is declining? Yes, I read somewhere that male fertility has declined by almost 75% in the last century. So that male testosterone levels and sperm levels are about a quarter of where they were That's right. 100 years ago. And I'm fond of telling my students all the time that if you think your boyfriend is not as masculine as your father, you're probably right. Because mm. right? every generation we're less manly. Right. However, it's a, there's a little bit of a, a data bias there because okay. where do we get this data from? Yeah, I was wondering about 100 years ago, were they even measuring testosterone levels? They, well, they measured uh, sperm quality yeah. right? in terms of motility and mobility. And, right. and a lot of this is based on fertility clinics. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah. We're not doing random samples right, of men. Right, right. So what I always ask is, if we went to the developing world and pick some hardworking laborer, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, in, in the fields mm-hmm. in Bangladesh somewhere, right. would his testosterone levels be on par with the masculine men of old? Right. I think yes. Yeah, because uh, of the diet and getting the, the diet, exercise all, and all those other yeah, things, yeah, right? Yeah. And there may be something environmental at play as well, right, yeah. or it might be a selection bias where right. our data is skewed because we're getting it from people who are naturally impaired mm-hmm. and coming into these clinics all the time. Mm-hmm. So whenever you see stats like this, you have to like raise your eyebrow a bit. So we right. actually, uh, a student and I published a paper asking these questions about two years ago, and it made global news. It was, right. um, it was quoted on um, CNN and, and So MSNBC. you were trying to discover reasons for this? No. Or were you uh, demonstrating that I'm, it was I'm pretty the, lazy, the case. so I'm really pointing out yeah. that people are reporting right. that sperm quality is under decline yeah but uh, what i pointed out was it might be a data error right i see okay and i made the argument so you're being a good epidemiologist i was being a yeah. lazy scientist <laughs> let someone else do wait it's the same thing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> damn you <laughs> you don't do actual science <laughs> i think i can find one more question to wait ask. wait oh yeah wait wait uh are there plausible reasons for this my, my first instinct sure. would be something chem- chemicals yeah. in the environment so, yeah so, so a couple of reasons the biggest 
proposed reason is uh, envi- the <clears throat> environmental hypothesis. Mm-hmm. It's called the estrogenic hypothesis. Overuse of the contraceptive pill right. may be causing women to urinate estrogen into right, the water right. supply. We're drinking it and becoming more estrogenic. There may be overuse of certain vegetable products like mm-hmm. soy products, which soy are products, estrogenic yeah. right. phytoestrogens, or uh, certain plastics, BPAs, may de- degrade in the environment and yeah. produce estrogenic kind of compounds. They sort of mimic estrogen. Precisely. Right. Yeah. These are all theories. There's right. not a lot of evidence for it. There's right. some, but not a lot. It's right. unclear. And so the introduction of even small amounts of estrogen into the male body will suppress sperm and testosterone Well, this production. is why uh, the U.S. Secret Service tried to convert Hitler into right. a woman by giving him estrogen. Giving him limp carrots. Yeah. <laughs> limp carrots. <laughs> Wasn't that a band from the 90s? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Did it all for the noogie. <laughs> well, on that note, dear Wait. listener. No, one more. One, one more. more. Okay. Yeah. I got plenty. Well, well, what time are we at? We're at 22 minutes. We well, that's not long enough. We got plenty of time here. Our, our listeners want more. Okay. So if you took a typical pencil. Okay. And drew a line continuously. How right. long would that line be? Ah, typical I, pencil. I so your standard it. pencil with graphite in it. That's right. And I assume you're sharpening it as you go along. Y- yeah, <laughs> you have to. That noise. <laughs> and you're drawing and drawing until the very end. Until, like, the very until end. this little until tiny nub snub. where right. no one would ever use it anymore. Yeah. The question is, how hard are you pressing How hard are you pressing? Okay. Maybe it's dragging. It normal. Sure. Okay. No, I would like to guess this. Okay. And this is going to be a complete shot in the dark. But I'm going to think it's something very long, so I'm going to say 10,000 kilometers. No, not nearly. Not nearly? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. It's a distance that you could run. Oh, really? Because I have pencils lying around for the past, you know, five years that are still going, but I guess I don't use the pencils that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you're not dragging them along the yeah, distance. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, a distance you could run. I mean... It's more like 10K, then. Yeah, maybe maybe you couldn't run. Oh, okay, <laughs> a fit, very fit person could right. run. Fifty <laughs> k. Yeah, around there. Fifty five k. Fifty five k. Okay. Yeah, I could run fifty k. Not necessarily in one day, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice hotel along the way. <laughs> okay, true or false? An ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain. I think that's true. It is true. Yeah, and I don't know what what to do with that information. <laughs> I'm a little creeped out by it. Yeah, that is a little bit creepy, actually. And they're not—I don't think they're particularly intelligent creatures. No, but they can really. It's see like things. it's like a living surveillance camera. Right. <laughs> so it's just yeah. an eyeball with a, just, yeah. a little brain attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking. We could probably save money on surveillance. Right. Like, and it goes into sleep mode and puts <laughs> puts its head under the sand. Hibernation mode. Uh, okay. uh, we got it. We got to end on a better note than that. Okay. Uh, how long is a year on Pluto? How long is a year on Pluto? Should I go write my dissertation there? A year on Pluto must be 272 Earth years. That's very close. Yeah. 250 Earth years. I was very close. 248.5. Yeah, not bad. That's not amazing. Bad. Oh, well, I know that one. Then. So the, uh, the new Horizons probe, which just went to Pluto, is now, has now been retasked to go to a new object in the Kuiper belt. Uh-huh. So this object was discovered after the probe was launched. Ah. Isn't that amazing? That is. And so they can recalibrate the, That's right, the yeah. trajectory of so it. So the object, it's called MH something or other, uh-huh. is, is too big to be a comet, but too small to be a planet. Right. So I'm always thinking, oh, Plan- I hope it's an alien probe. Planetoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's big. It's not as big as Pluto. No. Okay. It's, it's much smaller. All right. It's amazing, though, that you know we have the technology now to detect something the size of a house. Yeah. That, that far, far away. away. Yeah. And at the same time, have a device out there we can now retask your, yeah. as it's moving as at breakneck yeah. speed. And I think they're both moving at breakneck yeah. speed. Yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy. Hashtag science, my yeah, friend. Yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. What are you humanities people doing? Huh? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. That's what you're doing. <laughs> I'm trying to get the cereal spoon into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good day. <laughs> you're quoting dead philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. They're not moving anymore at all. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> this is Monkey Ray. Hey, you know what we didn't do? What? We didn't mention our sponsor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's kind of important. Right. So we actually have something resembling a sponsor these mm-hmm. days. And uh, to check them out, they're called Checked. They do in-home blood testing in the USA only, though. So go to sciencemonkey.ca slash C-H-E-K-D. That's sciencemonkey.ca slash C-H-E-K-D to, to visit them. I assume you can go to checked.com as well. Yeah, but we get a piece of it. Go oh, through, yeah, so go, go through us. Yeah, through us. Yeah. And also, if you want to uh, uh, get a piece of the books that we have written or we cited on the show, mm-hmm. go to 
sciencemonkey.ca slash Amazon mm -hmm. and uh, and buy our books. And really, we don't need the money that badly. So if oh. you just look at our titles and go to the Actually, library. Actually, just leave a good them, review. Good review is good enough for yeah, us. That would be good. Yeah. And as always, uh, contact us if you have any questions about this show or have any topics you would like us to cover. Yes. Until next time. Or corrections. Or cor oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct us, Maximus. <laughs> That's the... Never mind. <laughs> Robert Himes, our, our corrector in chief. Right. From now on, will be called Correctus Maximus. Yeah, he's had three shout outs now. I think. Dad. This is Monkey Ray. Monkey Graham. Boop boop. Signing off. Okay. I can't say it. Is it off button? It's